Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Scott Lennox here with Fishing OC in the kitchen with my lovely wife, Kristen. What's up, babe? Hi, ready to go. Yeah, we're going to do a cooking segment for you guys. Um, so it's been a little while since we've done a cooking segment. Apologize for that, but Kristen was really upset with the fact that I caught the first flounder of the season last oh, year. Oh, you're terrible of it. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah just kidding. Uh, no, if we've you've been... watched the video, you know that's not true. <laughs> no, right after we did our first cooking segment, um, last season with the crab pie that a lot of you have said you love. Thank you very much for that. Um, I was talking about how the first flounder was gonna be caught and damn if I didn't do it, just a little while later on April 3rd of 2022. So that's my uh, hoorah moment for the year. And he's still talking about it a year later. <laughs> I will, it's been 30 some years. Anyway, just kidding about that. Um, but we are here to do another cooking segment. We saw some folks at the Ocean City Boat Show and you guys came to us and said how much you love the cooking segments and us doing stuff in our kitchen. So we decided to do another one for you. Uh, and it's one of our favorites, if not our favorite. The crab pie is awesome. There's no two ways about it. But this is the Krabby's recipe. Ta-da, Krabby's is coming at you. Um, and if I had to choose between the two, if I had one of each sitting on a plate and somebody said you can only have one of those, I'm probably picking Krabby's every single time. That's funny. I know Ryan, our son, would yeah. too. But me, I'd pick crab pie. You would? Yeah. Okay, well, Krabby's is my favorite. And if you like crispy, crunchy, kind of buttery, crabby, um, super, rich. super rich, really, really, delicious. really, really delicious bites of food. You are going to love the crabbies. Um, so let's get right to it. You see our, our cat Bailey here. Every time the seafood comes out, you might see his head pop up in the front of the screen, but uh, let's get to it, man. This is a really, really simple recipe. Uh, just a few ingredients and it's super easy to do and, and like I said absolutely delicious so let's do it well this recipe I'm sure if you google crabbies some different recipes will come up sure this particular one is from my old days back in Hurlock when I was a kid eastern shore yeah uh, Dorchester County for those of you familiar yeah or yep. from there um, and it came from a neighbor who told me that it came from somebody else, another neighbor, an old antique dealer down like the street. like a pass-me-down, kind yeah. of like, okay, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. But all I know is that we've made it over the last 40 years, and it's always been perfect. It's delicious, I've and it's never, easy. never, ever, I usually modify recipes, yep. but not this one. This Make this one as is. Don't this is this, this is mine and Ryan's probably favorite food oh, yeah. on earth. I know yeah. for sure it's Ryan's. Yeah. Yeah, it he, he asks us to make this Well, we're making time. a double recipe today because he's yeah. <laughs> he wants so many of them, yeah. But for the camera, we're only making a single recipe. Yeah, we're making, this is a, this is a one, uh, this is one recipe for Krabby's is the recipe we're going to give you right now. So what do we need for it? Sure. Well, just to tie on to that, the reason we make a double recipe is that this calls for half of a pound of crab meat. So if you buy a pound of crab meat, it's easy to double this. There you go. And once you realize how delicious it is, you'll want to make a double Yeah, you'll want to make it. Plus, we freeze them at, at a, at a oh, part yeah. of the process. So uh, having frozen crabbies in there for just, hey, I want something, a snack is really, really cool. It's so good. All right. So this is the rich part of the recipe. It calls for a whole stick of butter. Here's the magic. Yeah, this is the this is the secret ingredient. You have to make sure you get this. Don't get something else. It's called Old English Cheese Spread. And I always get it from Walmart. It's hard to find in the store. I don't even know where it is in the store, but I always yep. get Walmart pickup and they find it for me. If you have some old secret recipe for Old English Cheese Spread, maybe give it a try. But if you've got cheddar cheese laying around, some other kind of cheese laying around, do not use it. It's not for this recipe. Um, it's gonna, The Old English Cheese Spread is the way to do it. Um, and you're just not going to get the same experience if you don't use that. Then it, there's also a half a teaspoon of garlic salt and a half a teaspoon of seasoned salt. That's it, which I've already put into our, our container for today. And an one and a half tablespoons of mayonnaise. Yeah. Then we have six English muffins that I've already split, so they're ready to go. And That's of just course, one full pack of English yep, muffins. One pack yeah. of English muffins and, of course, our half a pound of crab meat. Okay. And we always use fresh when we can, lump yeah. crab meat, but use what you can. This recipe is great. When I lived in Hurlock, we would always have lots of crabs from the Chop Tank River, and we'd pick them out at the end, and then we would always save this to make this in the winter yep. time. So you freeze your crab meat if you have extra, or just go ahead and make it and pop it in your freezer. We usually get this stuff from our friends over crabs to go right here in Berlin on, uh, on Route 50. And we always, when we're making either crab pie or crabbies or some other crab recipe, when it's you're looking for that bite, we always go with the jumbo yeah. lump. We spare, we you know, we don't spare any expense. 
and just go for the jumbo lump because it's that it's that worth it for that bite. I personally would never use the <clears throat> imitation crab meat no. or the kind of stuff that's in the can. No. Always like fresh, or I'd rather yeah. just not make it. Um, but that's my personal preference. Totally agree. Okay, the first thing that we've done is I took the butter out this morning so it could get a little bit soft. It's a lot easier to work with when it's soft. And I have my mixer will just make it easy, right? Oh yeah, the mixer okay. just gets it all combined really well. Yep. Just remember this, you're gonna put everything but the crab meat in to mix, and then you're gonna fold in the crab meat last so you don't break up your lump. Okay. So we've got butter. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and add everything else. If you want to go ahead and pop that open, I always say this is the hard part for me is getting oh, it yeah. open. Because this is not a twist top. off cap. It's one of those pop offs. You got to pop off the cap. But there you go. Easy as that. Thank you. And then if you will just go ahead and put that in our little bowl here. So what I've done is I've added the butter. I've added the mayonnaise. I've added the seasoned salt and the garlic salt. And now Scott is adding the old English cheese spread. You can see this old English cheese spread is like a really, really thick cheese whiz almost um i don't know in a pinch you might be able to use cheese whiz but like i said a minute ago no, i no, would no, not <laughs> well you know who we talking we're talking some rednecks out there different. talking rednecks you might throw some cheese whiz in there if dip you've it ever in cocktail sauce tasted or something it, you can tell that the taste is different this is much richer yeah you're right okay and i accept no responsibility for there that <laughs> don't ruin your crab meat okay so i'm just going to go ahead and mix this up until it's nice and creamy So we've blended all of our ingredients together using our stand mixer, but I've done this by hand too. It works just fine. Nice creamy consistency. Yeah, make okay. it nice and creamy. The yep. only time it's difficult is if your butter isn't soft enough, it's kind of hard to get it to mix really well. Okay. So if you have a stand mixer, it's just easy. So the next thing you're going to want to do is taste the cheese <laughs> batter and make sure it tastes good. That's that good, good? As, good as it is, yeah. And then you're going to, by hand, take your crab meat and fold it into your cheese spread. Yep. So by folding, I just mean you, you take this and you kind of go over it and under it. Very loosely stirring Gently. it, right? That if way you, it doesn't break apart because yep. you can see the pieces of lump in there. So I'm just going to pour that in. Make sure I get all the little pieces out. Some fishermen out there, you don't know what fold means. Uh, <laughs> and you don't have a girlfriend or a wife to tell you what fold means, it's real, real easy. Just it's take the spoon and just kind of really gently stir it. Yeah, and just kind of, I just kind of smash it a little bit yeah, just too, just to get the cheese it. mixed yep. together. Now, some people might be tempted and think, mm, more is better, and be like, mm -hmm. well, I'm gonna add this whole pound of crab meat. No. Don't do that. It's too much. It is. Yep. The consistency. Because I've done that. Oh, have you? <laughs> yeah, you did, yeah, we did that one time. Oh my gosh, too, you and Ryan must have eaten a mod even though. Yeah, you we did, did. That. it was okay. too much. Yeah. The, well, the consistency of the seasoning with to the cheese, it's all in perfect amounts. Yep. So if you change one of the ingredients, it kind of throws everything else Your off. cook time will be off a little bit at the end. Uh, and like I say, it's just too much crab meat. What, yeah. what you should do is, the is just make a double bit. batch. Yeah, exactly. Make That's a double batch. Exactly. And once you taste these, if you haven't already, you're going to wish You're going to want to have a double batch. So what I did is I just tried to make sure that the cheese is mixed together pretty well with the crab because we're going to take this and just spread it on top of our English muffins. So I'm going to slide these down. And you can help me, I got you. Yep. So we have 12 English muffins. So you want to try to divide it up, usually like a, a nice spoonful, and then I come back if I have extra. And there you go, like a nice nice hunk like that to get started. And then you can always move it around if you have to, if you find one's got nothing on it and one's got a huge hunk on it. Um, but this is the way to go. And just kind of what I find easy, and Kristen's doing the same thing here, is just make a mound in the middle, kind of press it down, and then take those edges and push them down toward the edge of the um, English muffin as well. So you've got a nice little patty like that. So as we are preparing our crabbies, the Old English cheese spread, if you haven't had it, in addition to all the butter, is very rich. Very rich. So that's why you don't need to put a whole bunch on top of each English muffin. This is one of those ones where, you know, just enough is perfect. It doesn't need to be like half a cup or anything. I can't wait to eat these, man. You know how this is for me. So as we finish up our last two, 
I'm gonna do exactly like I say, and I gotta pull pull a little bit from some of the other ones because I was I yeah, we're it's kind of running low. And it here. happens every time it's I get started. And I'm like, I'm gonna jam this on there. I like to just put. I like to go back and add the extra onto the end. Yeah, nice, nice thin out. layer is best. So as you finish up, I know you're ready for flounder season. We're recording this in the beginning of March, so we have basically a month. Actually, a month to the day from when you called it last year. Wasn't it around April 3rd? It was April 3rd. April 3rd. Yeah. So we're about a month out. Yeah, but I think it might be early What's your this flounder year? plan? Yeah. Or you don't want to give it out yet? No, I'll give the flounder plan. I told a lot of people at the Ocean City Boat Show what the plan is. I did an Instagram post just yesterday. Some deadly double stuff. Um, my plan is I've got one last trade show. Uh, I'll be in Edison, New Jersey, March 17th, 18th, 19th, I think it is, at the Saltwater fishing expo in edison new jersey stop by there and see us we'll have all the rigs some back to blue apparel what we've got left uh tall jigs were a really good seller up there last year but as soon as i get back from that i'm done with trade show season so that week the boat goes in the water so it'll be around march 20th or so and if someone hasn't caught the first flounder by then i'll see you guys out there because <laughs> if the weather is good enough she knows whether she's out there or not i'm i'm pretty free for a couple of months i mean Obviously got tons of stuff to do as far as getting rigs and magazines and things like that out there, but um, it's kind of our right. off season if we have one. Well, how we looked at it I'm last year, I, it was pretty bad weather when you call the first yeah. flounder. So we'll, yeah. unless it's raining like miserably, I'll probably be out there. With yeah. Well, the day we went, it was, yeah, it was, it was windy, terrible. We, we, it fooled us caps. because the, way, you know, the, the wind wasn't really blowing where we were. And then when yeah. we got out there, it was cranking. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> was we got pretty, lucky and caught that crazy. first fish. So we'll be out there sometime last week or two of March. Um, just because those fish are starting to show up already, I hear. And uh, I think the first one's going to be caught early this year. Well, the year. water temperature never really got no. that cold because it's been such a mild winter, yep. right? Still catching rockfish at the Route 90 Bridge. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, I can't wait to do that. Yeah, it's there's been a little some, cold for me. I know you don't perch. mind. <laughs> Not up here. Yeah, I don't care. I'll bundle up. The biggest thing for us is getting the boat in the water so the bottom's painted, everything's taken care of for the season. So we don't have to mess with the trailer and all that sort of thing. We'll put it in the water, leave it at our slip, and then we can just jump in and go whenever we want. Yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, the next step of this is that you don't wanna pop these directly into the oven. No, right. You wanna freeze them for at least 30 minutes. So the good news about this recipe is that I can make them in the morning time, like when Ryan's at school or whatever, and then just pull them out anytime. These yep. are super for, we, as growing up, these were special occasions because we didn't have crab meat a lot. Right. So we would save these for Christmas Eve, we would save yeah. them for New Year's Eve, anything that's the that's same thing special, folks are telling us about crab pie. Yeah, yeah. special occasions. But we've gotten to the point where Scott and Ryan love them so much and our friends over at Crabs to Go yeah. are always hooking us up with crab meat. So we're able to have them a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, we really are. And, and this is an important part of the process. You might be thinking, oh, I'm just gonna throw them in the oven. And we have not done that. Um, I'm thinking it's probably because of the melt factor with the cheese. That, There's, and we're broiling it. Yeah, so right. I think it needs to be a little bit frozen right. in order to keep it and have the right consistency. It's like, it's like you, how you can cook a pizza from the freezer there's different ways to cook it when you thaw it out versus when it's frozen. Right. This recipe calls for these to be frozen for at least 30 minutes. So do that just so you don't have cheese melting all over your, your, right. your oven and stuff. Now, if you're planning to cook the whole batch in 30 minutes, just throw these things on a tray and right. your freezer will accommodate it, put the, freeze, the tray in there. But what I usually do is I make them in advance and I put them in the freezer for later. So this is how I do it. Yeah. I take parchment paper so it doesn't stick. So I don't want this delicious crab spread to be sticking to anything. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of do it accordion style so yep. like that. And then I put that one on there. And it will come out just perfectly. It will not stick. This really is a great way to do it. And then you can just stick them in a freezer bag. And then whenever you want to, you feel like, oh my gosh, I've got crabbies in the freezer. That's gonna be a really nice revelation sometimes where you're like, oh my gosh, I've got some crabbies, let's go. And then you pop them in the oven for, I think it's five or eight minutes and well, bam, you're ready to roll. It's not very long and we'll talk about that when we get to it because it depends on how hot your oven runs. Now we are cooking these pretty quickly. Oh yeah, so we'll do that's half the, because yeah, I want to save half for Ryan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> you can tell me that part all right so these are going to be for ryan and like she says half of the whole batch is for that kid because he's honestly going to eat six uh six of these no problem uh, six halves maybe, basically but not at one time because they're they are rich no he'll do these it these are like a nice he'll appetizer kind of thing he eats these for dinner like it's his whole dinner Aww. you know you're talking yeah he's, you're you're crazy he's gonna eat all of them and if he doesn't i'll eat what he's got left i have no doubt <laughs> We've all seen you on your crabs to go cooking yep. segments, harbor side. All right, so I'm just gonna, 
I'm going to take this half and just pop it in the freezer, okay. in my freezer bag for Ryan for later. Well, I'll just we'll fold these out, fold this over. Yeah, we'll put this in the freezer when we're ready to cook them. Don't put that on top, though, yeah. because that might stick. Okay. So just, can you do it? Sure. You want to try? Yeah. All right. These All right. are going into the freezer, and then when we t bring them out, then we'll tell you what we're going to do next. Yep. Once we're done frozen, uh, we'll pop back and show you the rest. All right, so Krabby's have been in the freezer for a little over 30 minutes, and now we are moving on to the next part of the process, which is close to finish. Your favorite part. My, it's my, <laughs> not my favorite part, but getting there. It's getting close. Oh, well. Eating them is my favorite part. Putting them in the oven so we can get them out for you to eat. So I'm just going to cut this into fours. And then when you put it on your sheet, I'm only cooking three because it's just the two of us. Yeah, we're just having a snack right now. We're saving yeah, I'm the rest of them for dinner with Ryan later on. And I like to put them so they're not touching on the tray, just so yep. you can get a nice uh, crisp edge on each one. Yep. If you put them together, sometimes they don't get that crisp edge. And that's the reason for the cutting, guys. So we're cutting it into four pieces because then it gets a nice broil around all the edges of each piece of the crabby. If you cook it whole, you're going to have a real gooey kind of, um, even sometimes almost frozen interior. So make sure you do this part of cutting them into four pieces. Yeah. And they go into a how hot oven? We're going to broil them. Okay. And it depends on your oven. Our old oven cooked a lot hotter than this new yeah. oven. So I probably am going to have to cook them for a little bit longer than what okay. we normally do. But on the old oven, I would take them out around three minutes. Okay. But so I'm, I'm going to check them at three mon minutes. Gotcha. So we're going to che we'll check them at three minutes. And then it's real close to when they can be done and burnt. So oh, yeah. what you're going to want to do is set the timer for three minutes or so. And then check them every couple of, every couple of seconds until you like how they're finished. Nice and crispy, golden brown and melty. And when I use the broiler, I never walk away from it. Yeah, no. So don't ever walk away from your broiler because, A, it can go, it can go from just right to burnt in seconds. Yep. Plus, if you accidentally, and I learned this the hard way in college, touch the broiler with, with like um, your oven mitt, it can catch on fire. Oh, yeah. And if <laughs> so you don't, don't have an oven mitt on, yeah, don't you do can that. catch on fire. <laughs> or like a little rag or something. All right, don't so do here, that. here we go. All right, so out of the oven, it was a little bit closer to four minutes and three minutes on this oven for us. So we'll start to figure that out, probably adjust our timing. <laughs> there we go. This is food. my favorite <laughs> bite of food in the entire world. <laughs> oh my God. That's, it really is. I don't use delicious. the word delectable much, but that first bite is like the gooey, kind of cheesy, crabby bite. And then check this out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> is, there is there butter drip down my chin? <laughs> no, surprisingly. <laughs> it's really rich and you can really taste oh the butter. Oh my gosh. And that old English cheese spread just has a, like a deeper flavor to yeah. it. I don't even know how to describe don't it. Don't use anything else, man. Don't use anything it. else. Here's what Ryan and I usually do. That whole, you know, bite the middle thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the crunch on the outside was like super special. They are <laughs> so delicious. Holy moly. Mm. Look at that. Look at that. Yep. I think that definitely the way to eat this is to just put the whole piece in yep. your mouth because then you get the you get soft everything. middle part with the butter and the cheese and the outside crunchy part. You get everything all at once. Listen to that crunch. Mm. <laughs> I know you like a lot of food, but no lie, this is really, really good. <laughs> it's so delicious. Follow the recipe just how it is. It's, it is really, really good. If you like those things independently, you like cheese, crab meat, butter, and English muffins, you are going to love them all together. Yeah. Our cat, <laughs> he's been running Barely around does. the kitchen wanting some <laughs> crab meat. Did I cook you enough? <laughs> Trust me, we'll have more later when Ryan, we cook Ryan's. I have no doubt. <laughs> so if you guys watch a TV show at all, you know I'm a hugger. But this is my favorite one. Oh, I love you. I love you. This is delicious. <laughs> he loves me most when I make him delicious food. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. These are going to be gone. Split second here. Um, but listen, if you haven't done it already, like this uh, video. Comment below if you have any questions about this or any other video. Uh, we respond really well to this kind of stuff. I'm on social media all the time responding to messages and 
I'm on my email all the time. I'm really good about getting back to folks. Whether you like the answer or not is going to be completely up to you, but I will get back to you. And uh, just drop us a note below. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Share it to your friends if they want to see this kind of stuff. And make sure you like our social media stuff. It's iFishingOC on Instagram and FishingOC on Facebook where we put all kinds of content. My nightly fishing report is probably going to start here on a more regular basis very, very soon. Even though we're doing it now, there's just not much going on. Um, and if you like the Krabby's recipe, any of our other stuff, just make sure you follow along. Nice job. Thank you. You want to say see you next time? See you next time. Yeah, see you next time. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright, you saved so me. You saved me one. <laughs>